one of the things that the enemy is that we don't realize very pr primarily, he is a preemptor. Meaning that you, you ever, you see these nature films of a snake and it, it wraps around this egg and takes, you know, and swallows the egg. Well, an egg is a symbol, is egg is something is about to happen, it's be, to be born. The snake is a symbol of, of the, serp, the serpent, is a symbol of the enemy. Mm -hmm. One of the things that the enemy always tries to do, that we have to understand, is he always tries to attack before something of God is going to happen. Mm. He always tries to attack specifically the very thing that is going to happen. If he, if he sees where something, he knows where something is going to happen for God, mm -hmm. he will go crazy for that. It's in the Bible throughout. For instance, Moses is going to bring redemption to the liberation of, of the people from Egypt. He tries to destroy him as a baby, you know, the, the preemptor, before it even happens. When, when man is, is in the garden, he seeks to he mess it up right there to stop what God is doing. When it gets to Messiah, he, before he, Messiah is even grown, he tries to destroy him as a baby. He always, when, when from Israel, I mean, look at Israel, it's going to come back into the world. All the prophecies are going to be fulfilled. The enemy goes crazy to try to destroy it beforehand. What is the Holocaust? It's the enemy trying to preempt the will of God. That's why, the, that's why Hitler went so crazy. That's why everything went so crazy, because the enemy was going crazy, because he knew what God was, try was going to do. In the last days, the attacks on, on God's people will, get, will become even more intense, because the enemy knows the kingdom is coming. That is why, that is why we, we touched on it, that's why Hamas is firing rockets. That's why the world, that's why the UN condemns Israel. That's why all the nations are going to come against Israel because Israel is the beachhead of God's kingdom. It's the beginning of the kingdom that is coming. The enemy knows that. So one of the things, so it's not only on a, on a massive scale, but on, in each of our lives, the enemy always seeks to attack because he knows what God is about to do. And so, and, and he specifically, and so it reveals something. He specifically seeks to attack the very thing that God is going to use in our life. So, so it, it gives us actually, an, actually a, re, a revelation. Because if you are in the will of God and you are, and you are being attacked and everything's going crazy and all, these, and, and all these things that have attacked you, it's a good sign. You're doing good it, because the enemy doesn't waste his time. It means there's something greater yet to come. There's something so much greater. It's got to be greater than what the enemy can do. So when you are, for all, you know, in the last days, there's going to be attacks, and when the enemy comes in like a flood, it's going to happen. For instance, I mean, I, I share that when I first started sharing the Harbinger, everything went crazy to, where, to the point where our building was literally destroyed. Our ministry was almost finished because of that. And now, if we're back then, we're saying, what's going on? Well, it, it revealed something. The harbinger was going to go forth to America. The enemy knew that. We didn't know that. But, but, but the signs of everything going crazy. When we, when we were about to, finally when the, when the harbinger was about to go forth, what happened? A, the Bible says the enemy comes in like a flood. A flood came upon our entire ministry. Three feet of water wiped us out. We lost the building for about seven, for seven weeks. And again, it was the biggest thing that ever happened. But it was, I said, you know, I'm telling everybody, it's okay. Get encouraged by this. Get encouraged. It's the best thing because if you're in the will of God and all hell comes against you, you have something great coming around the corner. Yes. And you have to persevere. You persevere. have to persevere. persevere. And so we should, we should get, we have to get a, a holy stubbornness, a holy obstinateness, that, that, that a holy kind of, oh yeah, well you did that, then I'm going to even more go forth for the Lord. We yes. need that. Yes. Because, and that's the attitude you have to have when everything comes against you and you're in the Lord is go, all right, all the more. We're, hey, we're hitting dirt. We're, we're hitting yeah. something good. We're hitting gold. We're hitting something. There's something good right there. And, and so if I'm being attacked right now, it means that there's something now that is going to happen. I'm on the right path. I got to keep going stronger, not weaker. And if he's attacking a particular area, don't give up on it. Don't get discouraged. But that is the thing that God's going to use to do it. And the other thing is, the other thing to keep in mind, and this is just a quick, a quick nutshell, but it's sort of encouragement, that, when, that the, every time the enemy does this in the end, God's people who stand, God uses the very thing that, he, that the enemy does to even further greatly bless his kingdom all the time. You know, he tries to wipe out Moses. What happens? Moses ends up in, in the Pharaoh's court. You know, he becomes a prince of yeah. Egypt. Tries to, tries, to, tries to, you know, he's going to crucify Messiah and stop God's purposes. He ends up fulfilling God's purposes. He's going to wipe out Israel. He ends up bringing Israel back in the world. 
So the same way that everything the enemy tries to do against you, if you will stand in God's will, not only are you going to have a great blessing, that a great thing is coming, not only that, but the very thing that is coming against you now is actually going to be turned around for God's glory, for your victory. Absolute guarantee of God. That's the Praise promise God. of God. Yes. We receive that. Yes. And, and that's the truth for everybody watching this show Yes, today. everybody who is in everybody. the Lord, or if they're not in the Lord, get in the Lord. That's yes. right. Because yeah. all things do work together for good. Yes. Lord. Truly, truly. We've got to remember, we gotta remember that. So if things are going, but if things are going Lord, so bad, it's so good. Because <laughs> take it as a, is that there is something great. And I'm going to hold on to it. You know, you know there, there is a holy, there's a bad stubbornness, but there's a holy, holy. stubbornness. Like, like Ruth, that. who refuses to let go. Right. Like the people of God, like Jacob, yes. who says, I'm not letting you go until you bless me. Exactly. There's like God wants that holy stubbornness. You know, when, uh, kind of when, when uh, the enemy says to the apostles, you're not going to be spreading the word. And you're, you're, and basically, basically said, "Oh yeah, well now we're going to go right to the temple. We're going to go. We're going to go even more so." Is what happened. We have to have that same attitude, especially mm -hmm. in the last days. And I want to throw in one more, just one, so throw in one more key of this. And I'm just giving a, you know, again, a, a little, a little uh, seed of it. But the other thing that is very important to know, and, and and it's a secret that people in the Bible know continuously, and that is in Hebrew the word the word is is is. Um, Hit hazik, and you don't. Uh, yeah, I'm, no, I wouldn't. Um, but uh, hide and it's seek. A, it's a dangerous <laughs> word. It's a, you know, and, and literally, it, here's the, here's the setup. Okay. David comes to a, a town. He finds the town is destroyed. The enemy has come in, has taken away the wives, have taken away the children. He, the people are mourning. It says David is. We, they're all weeping and mourning and crying out. And then on top of it, it's one of David's worst days of his life. On top of it, it says the people who are mourning. They said they decide they want to stone D David to death. So he's having a really bad day. Yes. <laughs> and and so. And so, he, so it's one of the worst times of his life, and he's ready, he's ready to collapse. But what it said, and there's nobody encouraging him. There's nobody giving him a word. What it says is a really cool thing. It says, but David strengthened himself in the Lord. And the word is, the word is, the word is hit hazik. He strengthened himself in the Lord. And, and because he strengthened himself in the Lord, what, it, what happens is he ends up getting the strength. He ends up going out having a victory, undoing the whole thing, which if he didn't strengthen himself, it wouldn't have happened. You see this again and again and again in the Bible. The secret of the saints of God is they learned, they knew how to strengthen themselves. And the word hazat, the word that, the word used can also mean to refresh oneself. It can mean to, to restore oneself. It can mean to, to make yourself strong, make yourself able to withstand, make yourself able to prevail, make yourself to become mm. mighty, even though you weren't mighty. Wow. The key is, you know, see, it's, you, when you read the Psalms, for instance, it's filled with this. God, you know, David says, he says, my soul, why are you so depressed? What's wrong yeah. with you? Hey, hope again. You're going you're gonna to praise God again. He's talking to himself, and he's ministering to himself. <laughs> yes. And we, it's a holy thing to talk to yourself and minister to yourself in the Lord for the Lord. It happens again and again. It says, it says that Jehoshaphat strengthened himself. He was in, a bit in the Lord. It says that Nehemiah, they came back. Everything is destroyed. They're all, they're all depressed. It says, but the people strengthened their hands for the great work that God had, and they built Jerusalem. And so one of the keys is you cannot depend that someone's always going to be there to, to encourage you or, or, or that, but that you have the power in God yeah. to strengthen yourself yes. and minister. You know, we, would, we wouldn't think twice about ministering to other people. Right. You see them depressed. But with ourselves, we yeah. often don't minister to ourselves. Exactly. You know, you have to kind of step out of yourself. You know, you it's a, you're, you're not stuck in your emotion. You're not right. stuck in, in your past. You're not stuck. True. That's the, be, that's not the end. That's the beginning. We say, okay, here's the situation. But now I'm going to minister to that person. Me, this time. I'm going to yes. minister to that person. What would you say to somebody who's discouraged? You'd say, hey, come on. You, well, why don't you say it to yourself? Exactly. You know, you know, I was just before we left it's here, you know, all the, the, the night before we left, I didn't get much sleep because all the alarms in our house went off. Okay, all, all of them went off. The smoke oh. alarm, there was no smoke, but oh. every single, piercing, we couldn't turn it off. We couldn't, you know, and you know, you know, one of the things, you know, Jewish people are gifted in certain things, but they're not generally gifted in mechanics. And, <laughs> and, and so, 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 you know, they look to me, I don't know what to do, but it's going crazy. I mean, it's, it's piercing and we have our little kids and they're oh. panicking. And so I, so I run downstairs to get to the, and my, my little, my, my four and a half year old, Eliel, oh. uh, he, he's on the, he's on the steps and he says, he says, daddy to the rescue. <laughs> and, he, and, he, and he says, and he's shouting, he's shouting on the thing. He's saying, go daddy, go daddy. He says, you can do it. You can do it. And I'm thinking like, I, 
I can't do it, but now I better do it. <laughs> <laughs> now, now I have to do it. I better, I'm going to fix that thing. I'm going to do whatever I have to do. I'm going to, I took the battery out. That didn't do anything. I did do all this stuff. Finally, my wife fixed it. But that's another story. <laughs> that's another story. That's another story. But, <laughs> but, 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 the, but the point, the point is that, that because, with that encouragement, I ha it just moved me forward. If you have two people and you have one has a coach encouraging them every time they go down yes. and the other one doesn't, which one is going to succeed? The that's one right. with that coach. Well, be, you have the choice. We, we, are told to in, we are told by this example to strengthen yourself, encourage yourself. You're about, to, you're about to fall into that sin. Don't just, you're not stuck in that. Step out and say, hey, come on, God. Don't do it. You don't have to do that. You've got something better. Minister to yourself. You know, make yourself strong. Your, things are coming down and everything, you're, you're depressed. You don't have to stay there. Step out and start ministering to yourself. Hey, come on. You know you're going to make, God gave you a promise. You're going to make it. Minister to yourself. We are called, if David did it all the time, even think of one of the most famous Psalms, we, we say, bless the Lord, O my soul. All. He's talking to himself. It's yes. not just a nice thing. He's saying, right. bless the Lord, O my, my soul, soul, and don't forget all the blessings he's given to you. But strengthen yourself. Hazak yourself. God, so God has given us that ability. In the last days, we need to use it. Don't, you, know, you don't have to wait for these things to happen, and you don't have to be stuck. In your situation or in your emotion, you have the power in God to strengthen yourself. We are called to strengthen our hands so we will build the great work that God has for us. That is powerful, yeah. Rabbi. So powerful.